Hello, welcome to smarthelping.com here. I'm going to go over the uh, upgrades that were done to the cleaning services slash janitorial services financial model. It's a five-year model, and the upgrades were in uh, updating, so we have an interconnected monthly and annual income statement, balance sheet, cash flow statement, as well as a cap table. And this was an earlier uh, template that I built uh, many years ago, so we added... Or I added increased um, assumptions for exit, terminal value, so we have a better discounted cash flow analysis. Before it was just on the, the very last month, now it could be dynamic, so you can end the template at any month. Uh, what I'll do is go through each tab here. I'll explain all the assumptions, how everything flows, and uh, then you'll have a better idea of what's going on. Remember, all of my assumptions here are arbitrary. You'll put in your own information, and let's get into it. So company name, you can put in whatever the company name is. That'll flow over to the financial statements. You've got your launch year. This defines the year the forecast starts. It'll go out for five years from this year. And remember, if you change this, be sure to go through and change any drop downs that are relevant in the assumptions, which will all be in light yellow. So those tab, those, uh, this row, uh, anything on the debt schedule right here. Um, the CapEx, all of those things. Uh, okay, then you pick your ed exit month or end month. This is this will stop all operations and cash flows on uh, whatever month you pick here. And then on the end month, you can decide if you want to include a terminal value or not. The terminal value will be, be based on the trailing 12-month EBITDA from the end month. And then you could apply this multiple, and this is your exit value. Uh, and obviously, if you don't want to include that, you just hit no, and then it will not populate. Next, we have funding sources. So cash, uh, you can either fund with some debt. This will go through a traditional loan. So if you put any amount here, it will reduce off your initial startup costs. But you will have debt going, and you could pick the, the month that that happens. And the terms you can enter here. The amount will come from the global control tab. This will flow, uh, principal and interest will flow through all the financial statements accordingly. If you do choose to end with the terminal value included, then any debt remaining on that end month will be repaid. As you can see here in month 60, that's happening. The model, one of the main purposes is to solve for the equity requirement, the minimum needed to stay above uh, zero cash position on the balance sheet. So here, basically if you have Startup cost and any burn, the, the total amount will come in here and populate. If we go to the monthly detail, you can see uh, you've got your startup costs here, less any debt, and then you've got some burn happening um, for a bit. And then over time, as growth happens, you're seeing some positive cash flows. So that's where our equity required is coming from. That flows to the cap table. As you can see here, minimum equity, you can enter shares, percentage shares, who invested what, how much of the company they're getting in common stock, referred class A and B, total fully diluted ownership values. And you've got a section for outside investors, inside investors. If there are no outside investors or it's just an owner doing it, that's fine. You can just zero out all of these and put it everything into, you know, founders or um, essentially owners. This will also show the available cash contributions and distributions over time, over a five year period, and the resulting internal rate of return. And all that will um, change as these percentage uh, shares change and the investment amounts change. The overflow flow row will include any uh, extra. So here we actually have more, so we would wanna reduce this. There we go. Um, overflow will add any cash that hasn't been populated in these first uh, first 19 columns or here that doesn't cover the min equity would then flow to here. All right. Uh, then we have tax rates. So you can enter tax rates here. If you don't want to show anything with taxes, you can always zero that out. But if you do want to show uh, the effects of um, taxes on the on the taxable income, that will um, that's an option. We also have all the sanity checks here, uh, and this checks to make sure the monthly and annual detail, all the items on there match the executive summary, match the distributions, and match 
obviously what's going on on the formal financial statement, income statement, balance sheet, cash flow statement. So all these should always be zero no matter what you change. And again, you can edit anything in light yellow. Okay, revenue assumptions. So it's pretty pretty straightforward here. Um, I've got 50 worker slots. So you're cleaning service, janitorial, you're gonna have workers. You can have the revenue that you're billing out for their time here and the month that each worker starts. If you have, you know, plan to launch with like maybe 10 or 15 and then grow to 20, 30, et cetera, you can do that up to 50. If you have more than 50, you would basically just compound the hours based on how many workers are there so if this was regularly going to be uh you know one worker working 25 dollars an hour 40 hours a month but really if you wanted to represent you know 10 here you would just multiply the hours per month by 10. okay let's move on um cost assumptions it's going to take the uh, wages you're paying these workers and then apply that to the hours you're billing per month. If the hours you're billing here is different from what hours are working, then you would want to hard code over column D with whatever that is. And then the start month is just whatever is on the revenue assumptions. Um, so that's going to populate um, basically your revenue and variable cost. We then have operating costs. So if you've got, um, you know, admin salaries, general managers, advertising, uh, rent, anything like that, you'd put here, put the monthly cost in the month that it starts and that will populate in the uh, expense section of the monthly detail right here. So those are revenues, costs, terminal value. This is just coming from all the other inputs for uh, EBITDA multiple. Here's the total valuation. You could, for tax purposes, define how much of that is going to be applied to fixed assets versus not. Uh, and then, so the breakdown will be right here. And then any of sale of building, if you have a building, um, you could put there. You'll define building assumptions here on the CapEx tab. I just zeroed it out, but you might have some. You've also got um, any fixed assets that are depreciable, you can put on here. Their cost basis, useful life, the month that uh, that expenditure happens. Uh, let's see. Cap table we went over, debt schedule, uh, startup costs, these would be one-time costs before the company kind of starts that are not in regular OPEX that you want to um, have in here as um, you know initial cash investments. Then we've got income statement. So this is dynamic based on all the assumptions. You've got clean service revenue, your labor costs, your contribution margin, which is just your gross profit um, after all variable costs. We've got fixed expenses, which are just GNA, in this case, startup costs, total operating expenses, EBITDA, interest, um, which will be dynamic based on the debt tab, debt schedule, depreciation based on the fixed asset purchase schedule. And then we've got uh, extraordinary income from the sale of business, net gain or loss, taxable income, income taxes, net income. Okay, so that net income is going to be flowing over to the uh, balance sheet for retained earnings. But before we get there, we've also got um, income statement annual. So the same thing as a monthly, just on an annual basis. You've also got balance sheet monthly. So this is gonna take the cash, flow, cash position over time. You can see we solved for zero cash position. So we should see a zero here, there it is. Cash position should never go below that based on how the model works. Uh, your non-current assets. So as you start purchasing things like that, you'll see there, and then you've got accumulated depreciation. Uh, total assets, you've got liabilities, which is just the, any debt. Um, and then owner's equity is gonna be any investments uh, and retained earnings. And then you've got total owner's equity, total liabilities plus owner's equity. And then obviously the accounting yeah. equation, assets always equal liabilities plus owner's equity. And that always has to be true or else something's been done wrong in the logic. So there's the monthly balance sheet. Annual balance sheet is the same thing, but on an annual basis, cash flow statement, you're gonna see um, operating activities, which is customer receipts, OPEX, interest taxes. That net cash effect, you're gonna have CapEx, sale business, sales, appreciable assets, which don't happen until the end. And these are all, again, dynamic based on the dropdown selected on the global control. 
Um, for example, if I were to put the end months being November 2025 and go back over to the cash flow, you can see now that it happens in November instead of December. Go back to December. Okay, so investing activities and then finance activities, just um, borrowing, cap, uh, raising money through selling equity or equity investments, and then any principal repayments on the loan. All right, net cash. This net cash will then flow over. That's how we're actually coming up with the, the cash balance here based on the cash flow monthly total effect. And then that will balance with all this other activity here. And it's really a beautiful, um, financial statements are really a nice, elegant, beautiful way to show financial activity in a way where everyone understands what's happening. So that's why I'm upgrading all these templates to have this uh, logic. We've got distributions. This is just a discounted cash flow analysis of the whole project here, showing total investment required, distributions over time, internal rate of return, discounted kind of cash flow analysis, net present value, um, investor portion. If there were any investors, there's their contributions and distributions, internal rate of return, discounted kind of cash flow analysis, net present value. Same thing with the owners. And these will all be dynamic based on the assumptions. Uh, executive summary. We just have a uh, kind of a high level overview, cleaning service revenue, labor costs, contribution margin, expenses, total expenses, EBITDA, debt service coverage ratio. Um, this one removed. Then we got other cash flow items. You can see all this right here and the cash flow. And then this cash flow always will have to tie out with the any cash position on all the other places, which it does. Then you've got some return summaries here for internal rate of return of project investor owner, equity required, total cash returned, equity multiple project ROI, investor ROI, owner ROI. Uh, a nice chart here showing revenues, expenses, and EBITDA each year. Uh, visual of cash flow, position over time. Monthly detail, this is kind of where you can see the detail of how all the assumptions are populating and how we're getting to revenue, costs on a monthly basis, OPEX, EBITDA, debt service, other cash flow items, and then final cash flow. Annual detail does the same thing. Um, and if we go over to here, so you can see if I if I don't include terminal value, this zeroes out here. It also zeroes out on the terminal value. Um, you won't see anything in the cash flow with that. And you can also see we still match all zeros here. Okay, we'll set this back. So that's the template. I uh, hope it helps you if you're doing a cleaning service or janitorial. This is a nice... Um, high level way to uh, build a financial forecast. My whole goal in building this is to try to make it as easy to follow as possible with all the logic and also adjustable, updatable, editable. And so someone can come in and see how it's currently working. And if they need to make updates, which they likely will, they can go and do that without breaking too many things because everything's kind of uh, linked. Very straightforward formulas are used and it is, you know, that's, I, I always try to fit in the middle of building something that's granular enough to fit a lot of different cases, in, in, but it's also broad enough that it's not going to constrict itself to like, you know, it, I want something broad, but useful. So that's where I try to land on all these. Um, and then all these this, all these summaries, like the, the financial statements, all this logic here is very valuable distributions, uh, discount cash flow analysis, executive summary. These are just taking all the assumptions and put it into a high level summary, which you'll probably have these no matter what your forecast um, in logic um, is for how you create revenue and expenses. Alrighty, that's all I got for you. I'll see you on the next one. Don't forget to check out smarthelping.com. Uh, link is in the description box below to get this template. It'll be a one-time fee of $45. I'll also list it on vendor sites.